How IAM Works When working in IAM, it's important to understand the terms that are going to be used within it, so that you know what's being talked about when it's being talked about. These terms are as follows, IAM Resources, IAM Identities, IAM Entities, and Principles. We'll be exploring these in a few moments. Let's start by discussing the principle. A principle is a person or an application that can make a request for an action or operation on an AWS resource. The way it does this is the principle is authenticated as the AWS account root user or as an IAM entity to make requests to AWS. Previously, we spoke about how principles make requests for AWS resources. Let's take a look at what these requests are. When a principal tries to use the AWS Management Console, the AWS API, or the AWS CLI, that principal sends a request to AWS. The request includes the following information. The request will have actions or operations inside it that are required or wanted to be performed. It will further specify what resources it wants for those requests to be performed on. It will also have a mention of which principle is making this request. Further on, we will find that the environment data, which is the information about the IP address, user agent, and basically where the request generally came from, that information is also found within the request itself. And lastly, the information pertaining to the resource is also within the request. This is known as the resource data, which links to other resources that may be in play, such as a DynamoDB table or a tag on an Amazon EC2 instance, things like that. By this point, we know that principles make requests. But what we don't know is that there is an authentication step between the principle and the request. Unless authenticated, a principle cannot make the request. Authentication is done in a very simple way on AWS. All the principal has to do is log in via their credentials, which are their email address and their password. Once they've been authenticated, they may make requests easily. Once a request has been pushed forward, it moves on to the authorization stage. This is where it is checked whether or not the request can be allowed or whether it has to be denied. By default, and this is the case for if you are not re requesting via the root user, all requests are denied unless it meets the policy requirements to actually meet the resources with the request. The way authorization works is that they check via policies if the request should be granted. What we're looking for here is explicit allows. When the policy explicitly allows you to do what it is you've requested, you can go ahead and do it. One of the problems that you may experience with authorization is that you need complete authorization to perform actions in IAM. A single explicit deny will overrule any explicit allows that you have in your policies, and then all in all, your request is going to be denied. Once your request has been authenticated and authorized, AWS is going to approve the actions or operations that you want to perform in your request. Operations are defined by a service and include things that you can do to a resource, such as viewing it, creating, editing, and deleting that resource. For example, IAM supports approximately 40 actions for a user resource. Some of these actions are what you see on the screen. You can create a user, you can delete a user, you can get the user, and you can update the users. But if you wanted to do other things, for example, like say you wanted to play with an EC2 service, you could even start the instance, stop the instance, and run the instance. So these are just a bunch of the actions that you can perform once you've made it past authorization and authentication. Once you've defined the actions that you want to be performed, in your AWS. Now comes the point for resources. 
because if you want to do actions, of course you're going to want those actions to be done upon some resources. Now, let's look at what those resources are. Resources are objects that exist within a service. Like, for example, we say that we have an Amazon EC2 instance, or maybe an IAM user, or an S3 bucket, things like that. So the service defines a set of actions that can be performed on each resource. So say if you create a request to perform an unrelated action on a resource, that request is denied. And for example, if you request to delete an IAM role, but provide an IAM group resource, the request fails. And that's how you can expect your requests to work on your resources.